Well, hello there. How are you all doing today? Today we're going to look at pots and pans. Where do we start? I'm going to go back a few years to when I first bought my first set of pots and pans, whether I still use it, and what I've done with all of this in front of you. I'm Andy from The SA Survival. It's a dismal day. You just saw all the rain running down my drive. I was going to film outside, but I decided, you know what? The ground is just puddling up, soaking wet. So I bought it on inside. So what do we got? I'm going to put these guys aside. We're going to go through these and how we got here. So pots and pans. We all need them to go camping. We all need to be minimalistic. This is my first set that I bought. It was a Polish knockoff of the Trangia kit. The piece that's missing here is the extra piece that this actually sits inside. Um, that's just an added thing that I modified. What does it come with? A frying pan, a kettle, and three nesting uh, pots. I upgraded the uh, pot grabber to a Trangia pot grabber because it was ventilated, didn't burn, it was nice. The other one I had was solid, I didn't really like it. You can see that these actually go on the fire, all of them. The beauty of these is, if I only want to take one big pot and my kettle, maybe a lid, that's it. I can put these two to one side. This pot I used for a long time when I was in the cadets uh, back in the UK and uh, it worked fantastically. I never had a problem with it. Couldn't afford a Trangier at that time. It was the big and uh, new thing that had happened uh, around in the mid 80s. Um, funny how we go back to uh, alcohol stoves, which is what the Trangia runs on. This kit now sits inside of my off-road trailer, of which we are actually going to do a review sometime later this year. Can't wait to get that unboxed, dying to get out on there. But this is where this pot set sits. One thing I did do is I modified the handle here with a piece of rubber hose, just because this handle got a little bit hot. Has a lid on it, small opening more designed as a kettle than it is a pot so you could use this as a standalone downside is getting in to clean it so this stays really as a nested pot and that is it that's my first kit many many years ago that I bought loved it and I still love it where did we go from there came over to Canada using the military stuff I have the equivalent to the British BCD Crusader Cup. Has a pot stand, ventilation in there. This would use your hexi tabs. I've used it with my uh, fancy feast stove. It works perfectly. Folds up, canteen, mug, voila, all done. One thing that I want to do and I haven't got around to doing with this thing is making a lid. This is probably a 500 mil canteen cup. Um, as everybody knows, to boil water faster, put a lid on it. The other thing that you're going to do as well is save fuel. All right. Uh, I haven't got around to doing it. This uh, setup here is mainly in my bug out bag. Living here in British Columbia on the coast, the problem we have here is a potential for earthquakes. So my bug out kit now, I've thrown it in my car, you just never know. I inform the family, I may not be home for three days, I've got to cross two bridges. So unfortunately, I've got to have kit, I take that with me, it's got a liter of water in it, you just never know. So that kit I use currently, uh, it's in my kit. The other one I started to do is I made a kit. Plastic cup, everything sits in. I can put my food in here. I can make a drink in here. The reason why is because when I made this beer keg by Heineken, um, it was very hot around the edges. I see a lot of people get those wristbands, those silicon wristbands, and you put it around there. Um, holding onto it was a bit warm. I did try to modify it, but now I mainly use this as a uh, boiling pot. I can throw an MRE sideways in here. It'll boil up. But if I wanted to boil it up for dehydrated food, I can put that in here. This is great. Just cut the lid off. It's a fair size lid. I don't know if you can see that. Just cut the very thin edge. 
What I did is I left the pull ring inside right there so that I can vent out a bit of steam and it just fits on there perfectly. Great lid, great pot and again this kit has a fancy fleece that stays in here. So I have a windscreen, a fancy feast stove and some fuel that all sits in here. The lid sits on top, sits inside of there. It's perfect. From there, I moved over to watching a lot of people with hammer gear. Amusa pots. I'm like, that's a great pot. Some people call it a hillbilly pot. This, I made my own cozy. So I have my cozy for my pot. It's about a 750 mil um, pot. I crushed the handle so it was flat against the side of the pot and I made it a one finger pot just for lightness and for conductivity so that I didn't get burnt every time. Open fire and the fancy feast. This is great to cook food in and to boil water in for drinks. It does come with this handy lid. What I did though is I modified the lid. The lip of this lid actually would fit inside of here. But the next pot that I'm going to show you didn't come with a lid and I wanted to make this universal. So I created this pot to go on this lid to go on the outside of this pot. Amusa. I'm not sure if amusa.com is available, um, but you could buy this, you could buy this at Walmart. I've only seen it in Walmart USA, so walmart.com, and now I just went on tonight to have a look and I couldn't find it. So I'm not sure if uh, they carry this Amusa pot anymore. A lot of people say they like it, but that leads us to the next best thing. So again, with the pot cozy, the lid for the pot cozy, I came up with this um, grease pot. This is also from Walmart. I created my own lid. I'll get into the reason why that in a minute. Again, it has its own cozy. You can see that this one has been in the fire a little bit more regularly. It's about a one liter or just over one liter pot. And this is where this lid comes in handy because it goes perfectly on the inside. So yes, this is a grease pot. It doesn't come with a lid. It actually comes with a strainer that sits on top. Once you've collected all the fat from wherever, put the strainer on, pour the fat out, all the debris, the junk, everything else from leftover food stays inside the pot, easier to clean out. But it didn't come with a lid. So the modification between these two, and there's the height difference as you can see, was pretty cool with this lid. But it gets to the point where I'm switching lids around depending on where I wanna go. I didn't like this, so I kept this lid together and I made myself out of a foil plate, a little pie plate, another lid. Cut a little hole in it right here purely to let the steam out and also I can pour. That's the only reason. Again, boiling faster requires a lid and this has worked pretty good for me. Made my own cozy yet again. The best thing about this, put your uh, dehydrated food in here, boiled water obviously, let it sit for a while, stir it occasionally, you have a great pot. Both of these are great pots. This one now sits in the trunk of my car in my uh, ready box because I have two items. I have a box there with all my breakdown gear for my truck. And uh, This is a kit that I leave in there again with a fancy feast stove fuel um, with some food in the back. This guy sits in a tote box now ready to go on a longer camp if I only want to go in the vehicle. Don't want to take any of my trailers. I just want to grab my hammocks, grab some uh, pots and pans. This sits inside of a tote box. Absolutely wonderful pieces of kit. From here, you've seen it in the past, another Heineken keg. I call this the Heineken Bubba keg. I put this handle on here made out of snare wire. I cut the lid off and we'll talk a bit about this in a minute. The nice thing about this keg, as you can see, there's no spigot in the bottom. So there's no plastic spigot that comes out and if you try and put this in the fire, it melts and obviously you're gonna have a hole in your pot. How Heineken do it is they put their spigot at the very top and that's what this handle is right here. This is how you depress and remove the liquid from inside into a glass. So by 
cutting a very fine piece of the metal around the lid, you actually separate the lid from the can. I leave this handle on here so I can pull it on and off. It doesn't quite fit properly with the handle on there, but it is secure. Okay, because the wire's on the inside and the outside of the pot. So, why do I use this? This is on the open fire, it does a lot of my boiling for dishwashing. Um, it's been known to be filled, ready for the family when they come out and we have hot chocolate. Or you can make drinks, simple as that. Normally fill it up to the top and just leave it on the side of the fire. It's instant hot water, it's absolutely fantastic. I have one of these in the travel trailer and in the off-road trailer. So this is more of large camping stuff for me. GSI, great company. Um, I was given this for my birthday. Comes in a little reinforced bag. It's called the GSI Catalyst. It's got a handle on it. It's got a couple of niches in the top so that the handle doesn't necessarily fall down so the heat can convect away. It's got its own lid. Look at the size of that lid. This is huge. But inside, that's how wide the opening is. So this can be used not only as a kettle, but as a pot. Easy enough to get inside, wipe around, clean it out, and eat from. But it comes with a couple of little things. Spork, lid with sippy hole and vent hole. And if we separate the cups, or I said, should say, the cup and the bowl, we have a bowl to eat out of after we've cooked in here if we choose to, if we don't want to eat out of the pot. And this one has a neoprene sleeve on here so I can drink from it. Put the lid back on, sippy cup, I can drink, hot or cold. This is a perfect little kit for one man. The challenge to get the lid off. You can take one or the other. The bowl does have on the side, I'm not, I don't think you'll be able to see it, increments so that you can see what it is. 400 milliliters in increments, 100 milliliter increments. So pot's pretty good, or the bowl's pretty good. Or you can just take the cup and just have a cup and a pot. Again, nice big entry, has a spout, fantastic little kettle. This can go in the car, go in your backpack, trailers, wherever you want to go. This one for me is mainly going in my backpack and I can carry it away uh, up the hill. Plastic spork, it's not the best spork. I mean, I do like my titanium MSR spork, um, but this one's handy just to leave in this kit. Put it in the pot. Again, if you want to reduce weight, get rid of the baggie, but GSI Catalyst. Awesome. Next one is the Minimalist Cup by GSI. Has a sippy lid. Again, another plastic spork and a really cool silicon pot grabber. Two finger operation, as you can see right there, a little tab, and I can grab these pots. I can grab various pots if I choose to. If this didn't have a handle, I can pick up the pot without burning my fingers. Same with my big bubba keg. Again, without burning my fingers. Again, I know it's got a handle on there. I'm just showing you the principle of this guy. It has a little magnet on here. This bump here is a magnet. I know these pots are anodized aluminum, but you got a steel pot, works perfectly fine. Okay, stainless, obviously not. One thing that I uh, have noticed with this, if I put the lid in the sippy cup mode to boil on an open fire, which I'll show you how to do that in a minute, the uh, 
The pot actually expands and this drops in being silicon rubber and it's very challenging to get off if you want to have an inspection of what you're doing inside. So what I do with this lid is I turn it upside down. It's very easy to come on and off. All right. You say, I say put it on the fire. This sleeve comes off. It's anodized aluminum, like I said, using the pot gripper. I can get this off of the open fire or my fancy feast stove and then drop it straight onto my cozy that it comes with, which is neoprene. Put the lid on properly and I've now got a sippy cup with a vent hole and this is perfect for uh, one man, one kit. Again, I've taken this away. I like this kit when I go hammocking, even with the vehicle, uh, because it's by the side of my bed in the morning. I put my fancy feast on, rest this on there. Super quiet burn from the fancy feast. I get a nice hot cup of tea in the morning. So this all comes together. Um, as I said, like right now, you can see it's a bit of a challenge to get off even cold, but can you imagine if that's been in the fire or on your fancy feast, and uh, that's expanded and this just falls in and you can't get this off too easily. It's wide enough to actually take the fancy feast with it. So in here I normally carry my fancy feast, my windshield, my fuel, a lighter, and my pot gripper along with my spork. So these are the, the pots and the pans that I actually take with me. Do I use them all? Yes, I do. They have all different applications. Like I said, travel trailer, my off-road trailer, my vehicle, my backpack. I love them all. I don't know if I'd ever get rid of them. They're perfect. So great for bug outs. That's where that one sits. Second pot for a bug out or major camping. If I want to go more than two days, I'll take this one just to boil. But it always brings me back to the grease pot, the Amusa pot. Ooh and the GSI Minimalist. If these are too big, I then consider my Catalyst. I love the Catalyst because it has a wide mouth just like these guys, but I also, have, I also can accommodate my pots that are inside of it, my bowls and my cup. And again, my Fancy Feast stove can sit in there. In fact, I'll go get you a Fancy Feast stove and I'll just show you exactly what I mean. So the trusted fancy feast stove, obviously it's gonna fit in here. Obviously it's gonna fit in there. It's inside the bowl set inside my catalyst, done, voila. So the Fancy Feast stove is very versatile with all of these, okay? Well, that's my presentation on all my pots. I look forward to seeing you a bit later on. Like I said, I've got my DD tops. I wanna to unbox those. I wanna do it when it's dry. What I wanna do with my DD tops is lay them out. I have big ones right down to small ones and I wanna overlay them and then show you. I really don't want to do it in the rain because that means I've got four tops to dry and put away. But I'm looking forward to doing that. Off-road trailer, again, I want to show you that. All its different uh, accoutrements. And then fuel. A couple of stoves that I use. I'm going to try using kerosene. I've not used kerosene. I have a Whisperlite International. And I want to see if that works just as well as the Coleman fuel or white gas, depending on how you want to say it. So I'm going to do a review on that as well. The two main stoves that I use are the Fancy Feast and my Whisperlite International. But I can't get away. Open fire, most of the time, is the best way. Save fuel, cook on the open fire. Nothing better than that smell of burning wood. Again, I thank you for watching this presentation. Please subscribe if you enjoy this video or any of my other videos. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Don't forget, survive to be alive.